Satellite telemetry absolutely revolutionised the way that we viewed the ocean currents in the surface of the ocean. Before that, we had to go out and measure ocean currents using ships, using hydrographic measurements. You can only take those measurements relatively slowly. So, for example, to measure the ocean currents within a few degrees square uh, in the North Atlantic will take you at least a few days. You get very, very accurate measurements, and you also get a depth profile of the measurements, but it's only a single snapshot, and a snapshot that's taken you some time to get. With satellite altimetry, we can cover the entire globe within a few days. The Topic Poseidon mission took about 10 days to cover the ocean surface and its follow-on successors, Jason 1 and Jason 2. The ERS-1, ERS-2 and Envisat missions from ESA had a different orbit. They take 35 days to cover the ocean, but it's a denser pattern, so we get a better spatial resolution from that. Now that's simply something that's simply not possible by using ships, or you can put buoys out into the ocean, but it takes a lot of boys to be able to cover the global ocean. And we get that repeat, we take those measurements every 10 days, every 35 days, we get the same set of measurements, the same type of measurement. So we don't just get a single snapshot, we get the time series of what we're looking at. It's only the surface, so we still need the ships and the boys to go and find out what's happening below the surface, but we can monitor the surface of the ocean very accurately and determine the currents and what's happening to them over time from remote sensing, which we simply couldn't do any other way. When we first started doing this, back in the, the early days of ERS-1 and uh, the TOPEX mission, we found that there's a lot more variability in the ocean currents, in the surface ocean currents, than we've ever thought. And there are things called mesoscale eddies, effectively little rotations, like little storms in the surface of the ocean. And they're everywhere. We find them all over the place. And we can now see them and match them with the imagery that we have from sea surface temperature. And we can from the temperature, we can see what's happening to the, to the ocean surface temperature. Then we can look at the ocean currents from the altimetry and see how quickly these things are rotating, how quickly they're moving around the ocean. So we can start to merge the different remote sensing techniques to give us much more information about the, the scale of these eddies, how they change and evolve over time. To be able to separate out those mean ocean currents, we need another way of measuring the geoid. We need another way to get to the shape of the geoid. Until very recently, we didn't have any way of doing that. So ESA launched the revolutionary Goche mission, and Goche is the gravity field and steady state ocean circulation explorer. And it was specifically to try and address this problem, to separate out the signal from the geoid and the signal from the ocean circulation. And the way that it works is incredibly clever technology in that at the height of the satellite, it measures very, very small changes in the gravity field as it flies around the Earth. Now, the further away that you get from the Earth, the more smeared out that gravity signal becomes. So to be able to find out about seamounts, about very small changes in ocean ridges, you actually need to get quite close to the Earth. And Gochi flew in a, an incredibly low Earth orbit, much lower than anything else that we have, which meant that they had to build a satellite that was actually going through the top of the atmosphere, which meant that it was more like a very sleek aircraft than it was a typical satellite. And it was a, a very different technology. They were really pushing the bounds of what they could measure with the, the Gochi satellite. Over the mission lifetime, it was able to measure something like 50 million separate measurements of this difference in the gravity. From the data that we've got from the Gochi mission, we've managed to put together a much more complete view of the Earth's geoid than we've been able to get before from anything other than satellite altimetry. So we now have an independent data set that we can use in conjunction with the altimetry to tell us about the large-scale circulation, which we've not been able to do before. So, in essence, it's a simple subtraction. We have to take the altimetry and we take off the geoid field. In practice, it's a little more complicated than that because there are still 
small scale features, very small seamounts, very steep slopes in the geoid field that even Gautier couldn't quite manage to resolve. And so ESA have funded a Gautier user toolbox which actually allows oceanographers who aren't used to dealing with these kind of gravity-based data to merge those Gautier data with the data that we get from the altimetry to produce these nice merged fields of ocean circulation. That's what the oceanographic community expects. That's the kind of information that they understand. So part of what we need to do is to produce not just the data from the missions, but also the tools that allow people to generate their own sources of data that they can then understand and interpret in terms of the science. Goche was one of ESA's Earth Explorer missions. These are missions specifically designed to try and measure things and use techniques that haven't been used before. So uh, Goche was using um, incredibly delicate accelerometers to measure changes in the gravity field. The other ESA Explorer missions are the Cryosat 2 mission, which is a satellite altimeter, but it uses a different technique to be able to determine the shape of the surface and was specifically designed to measure the height of ice, so for measuring ice caps and sea ice, so that we can look and see how those surfaces are changing over time. The other mission is SMOS, SMOS, the Soil Moisture and Ocean Salinity mission, which is using a very novel technique um, of synthetic apertures to make it look like they have a very small footprint on the ground to measure ocean salinity. It's the first time that we've tried to measure ocean salinity from space. The measurements at the moment are nothing like the accuracy that we can get from shipboard measurements, but we get them everywhere. We get global measurements and we get repeat measurements and we start to get time series. So it gives us a, a huge increase in the amount of information that we've got and we're seeing some fascinating things in terms of the shape of the Amazon plume as the fresh water comes into the Atlantic. That's just one example of the results that are coming out of the mission already. The new missions require new data products. All of these data products have to be assessed in terms of their accuracy, their validity, are they really giving us true information about the geophysical state of the ocean and there's a lot of work that goes in in the calibration and validation of those data and of the products themselves to make sure that they're fit for purpose. Um, and from a lot of the ESA missions and from other people's missions, some of the data that we use now actually came out as, as byproducts of the original plan for the mission. Cryosat is an example. The mission was designed to measure primarily over ice, hence the cryo in Cryosat. But we've now found that we can use the data that are coming from Cryosat when it was operational over the ocean to give us more information about the state of the ocean. And in particular, it allows us to take the measurements much closer to the coast than we can manage with a traditional satellite altimeter. So we're starting to get much more information coming up close to the coast. And ESA, the Earth Explorer missions, are ideas, they're concepts that ESA show can work that may then develop into future missions that may become operational. So this process of taking the missions, taking the concepts from the explorers, the new ideas, through to giving us time series is absolutely essential when it comes to understanding our climate because it gives us the opportunity to be able to monitor how things are changing over time using very consistent measurements that we have globally at high resolution and we have continuity between those different missions.